Joy to the world is my mom's favorite Christmas hymn. I vividly remember singing it in the middle back left pew of my childhood church. I held whichever stuffed animal I brought to church that day and stood on top of the pew just to see the hymnal that my parents were holding. And here we are today singing those same words. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Joy, a feeling of great happiness. To me, joy looks like each of you here or online, especially here at this pageant. Dressing up as sheep and shepherds, angels, lions, and maybe watching from home in your Christmas jammies, we not only hear the Christmas story, we see it. We remember, retell, and reimagine this story in today's world. Christmas is a time when we celebrate the birth of Christ, the newborn child, and the light of the world. In April, my spouse and I welcomed our own bundle of joy and Hazel. Now at eight months old, she continues to be a force of nature, let me tell you. We post photos of her, all right, maybe too many photos of her, because her smile is contagious. But even saying that word contagious triggers a lot of us to think of COVID. And honestly, lately, I feel sad. I feel sad that this virus keeps spreading. I'm sad we continue to be fearful. I keep telling myself, it's the holiday season. Cheer up. I watch holiday films on Hulu and Hallmark. I listen to classic Christmas music, but I'm still feeling a little blue. On Wednesday, we had a service called the Liturgy of the Longest Night, also known as Blue Christmas. And it's important that we recognize and create space for that tension that comes in wintertime, joy and sadness, grief, yet also new life. And today in this pageant, we hear a blend of stories from the Bible telling us the most powerful story of all. God coming into this world to be with us. He came not as a 30-something-year-old man. No, he came as a newborn child. This child, perhaps like my own child, drools and crawls all over the place, screeches with great joy like a pterodactyl, but also needs to be comforted, needs to be held, a vulnerable child. And Jesus was born into a world of uncertainty, just like my daughter. I think of Mary looking down and saying, sweet Jesus, and not inappropriately using that term, no, truly, sweet Jesus, this is hard. This is scary. And then there's nowhere for Jesus to sleep, no snoo, nor halo bassinet, no white noise machines, no blackout shades, a manger, a, a long box, that horses and sheep eat from. There's another Christmas hymn that talks about this away in a manger. No crib for his head, the little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The triune God, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are known by many names. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. There's also Alpha and Omega, back when moving through the Greek letters did not scare us. But that leads me to the name that we always need to hear, another name for Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. 
God has come into this world to be with us, recognizing we are in need of healing, of comfort and joy. And when we are frustrated and we ask God why, God truly gets it. Because Jesus came into this world not to rid of that darkness nor doubt. He came to be a light amongst that darkness. In the church, and especially in the Episcopal Church, almost everything has a meaning to it. Take a moment and look around this space. Look at the red pews, the white marble, but look at the evergreens. You see them strung along the balcony and the evergreens in the back. Look at the colors that the clergy wear, the table that is set for each of us, and the baptismal font. But focusing back on these evergreens, a plant that stays green the entire year, they remind us of resilience, but also they remind us of survival. The Oxford definition of survival, I know, bear with me, a definition in a sermon, is, quote, the state or fact of continuing to live or exist, typically in spite of an accident, ordeal, or difficult circumstance. This rings true for us today. We exist despite these really, really hard things. Through Christ and with Christ, we are healed, we are redeemed, and we have that comfort. And in that darkness, we also light candles. You can see them throughout this space, but also over here with the Advent wreath, the five candles. Each Sunday of Advent, we, wit we lit one candle. A different family lit them, and one candle meant hope. One stood for love, one for peace, and one for joy. And then we have the center candle, Christ candle. On the past four Sundays, we sung, People look east, the time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Trim the hearth and set the table. People look east and sing today. Hope, peace, joy, love are on the way. But today we celebrate that those four things in Christ are here. Many members of this community have prepared our space. We join in celebration, whether here or at home. We celebrate Christmas. Christ's Mass, a worship service celebrating the life of Jesus, a child of God. And who else are children of God? All of us here and at home. In the darkness of the pandemic, in the darkness of the mundane, in the darkness of winter, God is with us. And towards the end of this service, we will sing Silent Night. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. We will pass the light of Christ through this space with candles. Even if you are at home without a candle, imagine holding one with you. Or more so, imagine that you are that light that shines in the darkness. And when you may not feel quite as calm nor quite as bright, someone else shares that light with you. For we are all in this together. Friends, joy to the world. The Lord has come. A child who came into this world to not rid of darkness, to be that light within the darkness, a light who is never overcome. 
Amen.